That's so weird, man. I know, right? It catches everything. I look like I'm 365 pounds. It does it does catch your nightmare <laughs> nightmare before Christmas arms though. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, you're lighthead! Call me Jack Skellington. <laughs>lots of questions on the community tab so let's go back let's roll a little old school i love let's it i love it rapid fire yeah, it's been a while fire <laughs> all right uh question one from rapid fire drew Lailwitz, and i don't think drew's posted a question for rapid fire before thank you very much sir do you think alan do you think a lot of alan's issues uh in the short game uh, inaccuracy has to do with his height differential between himself himself and the receivers no? no. Why not? No. You do, you just have a spot you got to put it. It doesn't matter of the height of the receivers. You, you know, it's, it's a window. Yeah. It's, yeah. If I'm going to throw to Paul, or I'm going to throw to a guy that's like, oh, what are you, 6'1"? Uh, yeah. You're 6'1"? Yeah. And or I'm going to throw to a guy that's like 5'9". It doesn't really matter. It's like the... The, the, the window's the same. Yeah. yeah. It's a carnival game. You're throwing it to row one versus row two. Like now, it's, the, if, it, if the question is, would his completion percentage be better if he had guys that could Go up, go more contested balls. Uh, you know that's why everyone was calling for Duke, Duke Williams. I don't think that was the reason why. I just think he was inaccurate on some of his throws. Okay, I just really think it was. Off. Yeah, I back you up on that. I think the problem with Allen's inaccuracy in the short game, uh, if we're looking at those short to intermediate routes, like we're going to remove the, the passes downfield. If we're looking short to intermediate. The problem that Allen had is the fact that he throws everything at 100 miles an hour. It doesn't matter how big your guy is. If the ball's coming in at 65, you're not adjusting to that from seven yards away. You're just not. Didn't so I think though, that's a lot of the problem with Allen. But did, wasn't he, like, one of the highest completion percentages in, like, short to intermediate? He was. Yep. But the passes that were not there, they, really they, were, there. they were not there. Nobody was getting them. All right, next question. Tom Galati, what's wrong with the Sabres? <laughs> Damn it, Tom. <laughs> Got him? <laughs> What's wrong with this? <laughs> I would need a flow chart I would say in like three days. I would say ownership, but I feel like <laughs> <laughs> persecuted. You son of a biscuit. Okay. Oh, here's a here's a good one. <laughs> what is Bavarian cream? Um, <laughs> you know does Paul is? wear a TB12 jersey underneath his, <laughs> his clothes? It's a compression shirt. Why is Mike Granada forsaken us? <laughs> <laughs> Who said this? To, to remember old fashioned trousers. Hey, where's your brother? He, um, his son. Okay, his they they call. See when they when they talk about players, he, he let me know this. When they talk about players in hockey, um, they they don't mention how old the kid is. They mention his birth year. Yeah, that's so right. They go, hey, the bunch out of 08. You know, so his son was born in 08. He's like within like a hundred mile radius of where they live. He's like the third best hockey player. Oh, jeez. So they travel every weekend. Oh, my God. So a lot of the Fridays that he was going to be available for the film room, Got he's sucked traveling. up. Yeah, he's traveling. So, okay. uh, and it's just like a, um, it's just like a late developing thing after I'd already cut the fact that we're going to do the pit stop playbook. And we're still going to do them, but we're just not doing them yet. Remember old-fashioned trousers, trousers. What differentiates a good wide receiver from an elite wide receiver? I will tell you this. God's honest truth. Separation. Period. End nope. of sentence. Nope. Separation. Nope. Nope. Oh, come on. Nope. Marvin Harrison. Darius could, Hayward Bay could separate. Would you say he's a great wide receiver? It's not hard to separate off a guy that you just know is going to run a go route. Mar I'm going to put Marvin Harrison out there as an example. Marvin Harrison will not light up you light you up in combine. Will not light you up on a stat sheet. Who's his from quarterback college. again? Let me get there. All right. Right. But Marvin Harrison became great because he learned to separate with with above average skills. I'm not going to say great skills. With above average skills, he learned to separate. And Peyton Manning rewarded players who got separation. You are an elite level wide receiver if you can separate. Because if you can separate, you're open. You get more opportunities. That's what makes you elite. 
Peyton Manning made Austin Collie relevant. And you're going to tell me that it was a separation from Harrison. <laughs> yeah. I will say that what separates a great wide receiver from an elite one is to make a play when there is no play to be made. Oh, God. Are you serious? Are yes. You, are you Captain Comeback right now? Okay, what the? Excuse me? Oh, dude, the Bills just got to get to the fourth quarter. Allen's going to lead him back. He, le- he loves the comeback. That's never, that's not even close to what I said. <laughs> I'm so glad you're done for a couple of weeks. I don't know. <laughs> Wide receiver's running a route. Quarterback has nowhere to go. He goes to him. First of all, he's covered. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. He goes to him because he knows. He knows that he'll make a play for him. The guy goes up. He's not supposed to catch the ball. Mm-hmm. And he still catches the ball and brings it down anyway. Okay. I mean, I like I like your assessment. I just think you had a bad example of it. No, no, no. My assessment is a player is a Hall of Fame level player. Your your comparison Why is, is David. Hall- you know, your comparison is David Tyree catching the football against his helmet. That's wow. That's that's your comparison. Talk about taking you know the exception of exceptions. <laughs> God, that's so I missed awful. doing I did miss doing this segment. <laughs> okay. You're saying that who's who's better, Julio or Marvin? Because that's what I was describing. I was describing Julio Jones. He makes plays when there isn't plays. Harrison had great separation. He also had Peyton Manning. Is it my point? That's a hard question. Yeah, did you shut him up now? <laughs> uh, Steve Hampton, do you think Josh Allen makes a big step forward in year three as he did in year two? And if so, what do you think that looks like? Like, what specific parts of the game do you think will be drastically better? I think, okay, Allen did make some big steps forward. He did. Right? He did. The offense was a bit more customized to him. Right, because they brought in receive, they brought in a whole new group of receivers, and this was what they were going to do. Right, they weren't working with what they had, which is what they had to do last year. Right, they worked with kind of what was already there, and they realized that doesn't work. So they went out and got guys that they felt would be able to absorb into a system. So I think it was just easier for Allen to make adjustments. I think Allen is gaining responsibility, and that's what we saw this year was gaining responsibility at the line of scrimmage. Right, I think a lot of that was guided because we noticed. Yes. He's trying to do as much of it before 15 seconds as possible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I, I think that is the next step for Allen is to be able to control the offense post 15 seconds. Right? That That's the next step for him. I don't think mechanically he's going to be any different. I, I don't think you're going to see that stuff from him. It's about on he is the player that he is. You're entering year three. Physically, you cannot teach him how to throw a football again. <laughs> they are who we thought they were. We let him off the hook. Well, you can't, you can't be the coach that says, "Well, you know, we're going to come in. I'm going to teach Tim Tebow how to throw in a natural motion." Like you're just not. <laughs> they tried though. Yeah, so I think it's about the cerebral game for Allen. I don't think it's about anything more than that. Physically, I don't think there's anything for Allen to work on at this point. He is who he is. This is what it is. You just now you have to teach him how to just work with that from the mental side of the game. As a head case, what do you think? Admit it, you were a head case as a quarterback. Admit I it. am. Ad- admit it, you were a head case. What do you mean a head a- case? You were, you. Which time? <laughs> Just, I'm saying, at the quarterback position, you were a player that tried, that you were probably a player that processed a lot of information at one time. Like, tried to process as much information as possible. Are you kidding me? I'd be looking at the, <laughs> I'm looking at how the, the defensive tackle lined up. Which army put down? But I think this past season, Josh Allen had an insane number of mistakes. Insane. Kind of like a rookie quarterback does. So not a second-year quarterback, but a rookie quarterback. But you know what? I think he's the type of kid to learn from those things. I I agree with that. So his development comes in the fact is, okay, I have been in this situation. I've been in this situation. I've been in this situation. Can I learn from that and then not make the same mistake again? Mm -hmm. We broke up Josh Allen's rookie season in the first six games and the second six games, and they were very different. We broke up his around around the 12th game that they were playing last year, six and six. You know, he or or the the games when uh, Dable was on the field versus when he was in the box. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like a different transition. Now he has all of this 
uh, all these games at his disposal to analyze and break down and say, listen, when we get in this scenario, I know this happens. When we right. get in this scenario. When we get in this scenario and it's fourth and two, and Dave will already call the play in the huddle for a hurry up for me to run a quarterback sneak, I'm not doing that. Okay. Now he has, hopefully, a repertoire of plays that he really, really likes, that he could go to. They're his go-to bread and butters. Not Dable's bread and butters, Allen's. So, uh, but I'm 100% agreeing with you is that you're not going to teach the kid how to throw a ball. No. He, is, he throws the ball how he throws the ball. Just get the receivers in the way. I think it's also important to understand that the major difference between Allen was he learned how teams play against him, right? So he learned how, t- how teams are going to attack him. And that's something that you can't learn um, unless you're in the fire. Holding a clipboard. Right. Yeah. So he learned because we saw consistently third and less than third and third and less than three. The third and more than three, he was getting swarmed. They were going to stand eight at the line. Oh, yeah. They were going to swarm him. They were going to try to confuse the, right. the crap out of him. Nom, 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 nom. Is this good? It is actually quite good. Can I have my hash brown, please? What, you're going to double down? I'm going to double down. I'm fully embracing the fact that I have three kids, and I'm going to stop trying to... Six, hey, pe- that's six packs are for beer. Listen, dude, I'm switching to zone coverage. Yeah, right? Look at that. Tell me that's not just a heart attack right now. Daniel Garries, do the Bills have room for the nine draft picks that, that are on their roster? I'm paraphrasing a little bit. <clears throat> um, how many think do you end up? Uh, they actually, how many picks do you think the Bills actually end up walking away in the draft with? Because again, you look at the roster; they are at 53 right now. How many are they at? They're close to 50. They're, they're. Daniel's right. I mean, rosters are at 90, so you always have room for draft picks. We have nine picks in total. So, do the Bills walk away with nine picks? Um, or six. I think they take six. I'll go seven. Because I think they're going to make, they have to. Do you know this from a number standpoint? They are the team that needs to spend the most money this offseason mm-hmm. in their cash spend. Not the cap, the cash spend. Yep. We'll go into that later. Yep, cash spend's a big deal. But 53 draft million, pick, I think it is. Draft picks are not hard to spend that money on. But. They're going to spend about 16 on their Here's projected. The in their, in their we have yet to see them not trade in a draft. So I have to just assume they're going to try and bounce into the third because they've developed a reputation for bouncing in the second and third. Okay, cool. And there's going to be teams that are leery of the CBA. We say, listen, let's try to get some controllable contract because we don't know what's on the other side of this fence. Well, there's also some teams that are strapped. Every year, there's teams that are strapped. New Atlanta. Orleans, Atlanta, just the 49ers, they're strapped. So signing free agents isn't necessarily a thing that they have the room to do. So the easiest way to build competition is just to acquire a bunch of fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks. The Vikings, and how do you do that? You keep shifting back in the second and third round. What position do you? Uh, what position of need do you not want the Bills to address in round one? Quarterback. Wide receiver. Position of need? Quarterback. I heard you. Quarter, yeah. As in, as in green eighty, green eighty two, green eighty two. Do you say corner or quarter? They don't need to draft a quarterback in the first round. Yeah. What position of need? Oh, of need. Oh. Yeah. What position of need do you not want the Bills to draft? Uh. Linebacker. They do need a Sam linebacker. They really do. They need a Sam. That will have been taken care of in free agency. Oh, I see what you did there. That <laughs> will have been taken care of in free agency. Ah, uh, Sam and Will. I didn't mean it that way. I just meant Vic. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Mr. Beasley? Yeah, he's more of a defensive end. I can't go back now. Well, I know this you can't. It's my can. fault. I know. That's a big sword to fall on, doesn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate your uh, I appreciate this how, is usually how ethical you, you are this is your this, I, this is normally my arena where I, I, I grab onto a pick and I just hold on for dear for dear life yep that's me um, I am going to say wide receiver you're too far down you know by the time you get to the second round you'll still have a decent second round pick you can move up in the second if there's a guy that you really want but I think you're you're marking the first four receivers off the boards, just saying the cost is too prohibitive. 
you know, I'm, it's too prohibitive. I think you need to add a rookie wide receiver, but I just don't I don't foresee them taking value in the first round for that. They're going to see too much value in ancillary players, and, I, and the Bills are big on value, and I don't blame them for that. You know, it's it's going to be tough because I, I foreshadow this. Mm-hmm. There's going to be really good talent on the offensive and defensive line that's going to be at 22. Mm-hmm. And that's what they do. They get <laughs> talent. Yep. Um, yep. Is – well, we'll have to see where Jordan Phillips, Shaq Lawson, mm-hmm. that may change some of the needs sure. of, this, of this team. Maybe they do need another def- interior defense. Maybe they don't get another DN, you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but if, honestly, if the second or third best tackle is on the board at 22, it's, if yeah. they even stay there, Bean's going to pull the trigger. And I, I would not be I would not be upset I at agree. offensive tackle at 22. Yeah, I'm not expecting a sexy pick in round one. No. What changes would you guys have made to the O line if it was up to you? By the way, thank God it's not up to you. <laughs> so, what changes across the offensive line? Um, I signed Quentin Spain. I know you do. I, I again, I am, I am of the school of that was you. He did a good job for you. He did. But if you're, if he's looking for a three to four year commitment, I'm not getting on that train. If he's okay with another one year deal. Then yeah, I'll, I'll go back on. I'll, I'll go back to Quentin Spain for another season. If he said but if three it's a, for twenty, no, I Why? wouldn't do it. No, no I wouldn't do it. Because you already have to remake the rest of your offensive line already. I mean, Feliciano's not young. Um, you know, you you have Morris there, but you, that Spain's guard spot is. A, you're looking to replace that sooner or later anyway. So. If I have to choose between Feliciano or Spain, I'm picking Feliciano. So why would I tie myself to Spain now? Right? That that's the theory. If he wants to go one or two years, yeah, I do one or two years. But if it's three or four, then that's that's a little that's a little more than the long term commitment I'd be willing to make to quit in Spain. But other than that, um, you know, I I don't re sign Spain because I think Ford should be playing guard. So believe me, if this team's got a lot of guards on it. All guards. <laughs> He's got a lot of guards. He's got all guards. <laughs> Your two best tackles had an ankle injury and were on IR the entire season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure were. This is so tough because I like Spain. I think he he makes Dawkins better. Mm-hmm. Um, did, did Dawkins have the best season that he's had since he was in Buffalo? Well, it was a pretty low bar for him. Right. I think he's a guard. I think I still think Dawkins is a guy. I don't care how many plays he's played at left tackle, how committed people are to him. I, I just think he's a guard. I think he would be an all pro guard every single year of his career yeah. if he was a guard. It's it's hard it's hard to argue against that. It really uh, is. I mean, I know we say it and it sometimes almost becomes like a punchline now when we talk about it, but that's how I feel about about Deion Dawkins. Ford is starting to take that mantle. Right. Where if you decided to go into next season with Adrian Waddle at left tackle, Which, Ford and Dawkins at your guards, Morse in the middle. I, I mean, I love me some, some Feliciano. But if that's what you want to do and then draft a right tackle, okay, let's see how this works. Adrian Waddle is a fascinating one, right? Because he was on IR, ineligible to come back, yet they kept him on the roster the whole yes. season. They didn't need to. So there's a fascinating exercise there. I don't know what it is, but they, they could have easily just him. cut him. No they, one would have picked yeah, him an up. Yeah, an hurt. injury settlement. Yeah, I, I think they want him here. I really, th- I really think they see a lot of potential, strange, right? Yeah. Tying just real quick to Mr. Waddle, uh, Skarnecki is done. He retired. Oh, thank Christ. <laughs> you guys don't know who was his name? Gino. Who cares? Skarnecki. Dante Skarnecki. Dante. Is that his name? He's old. Dante? I didn't say Monte Cristo. I said Dante. <laughs> so he was the offensive line coach for the Patriots for years, turning out Pro Bowl players over and over and over again. Turned out Marshall Newhouse. Kind of way. Miracles can happen. <laughs> Scott Blakely, could Olsen be another retread like Benjamin? Uh, why do we not just invest in Knox and Sweeney as our future and stop picking up tight ends? Uh, a la Croft and Kroom, let's focus on tall receivers, which have a tendency to have more speed. Sick of hearing about tight ends blocking. Dable doesn't run the ball enough, so who cares? <laughs> Get some players that can jump higher than a Smurf, uh, and that way De- uh, Allen doesn't need to throw it downward. Lots well, unpack there. Yeah. So the question is, <laughs> do you need Olsen, and why aren't there tall receivers on the team? 
that's that's the question. Um, I think I don't think receiver height is a big deal for McDermott. I don't think he cares too much. I don't think it's a big deal for Dable. They look at the, the routes that they ran did not feature skill sets that a tall receiver would have been able to utilize. The right. offense is predicated on um, on Allen being quick, a threat to run. That's quick, what the offense is. No, no, on quick routes that, that get separation, so your quarterback gets get the ball out of his hands. Yeah, you don't want him to hold the ball anymore. No, uh, that's fine. Olson, as far as the Olson, you know, we we cut an episode. This week about Olson, so um, I I think that's that's more of. Did you watch the Houston game too? That's frustration. <laughs> right there. Next question: Justin Flint, the cop. Uh, should we sign Amari Cooper, Robbie Anderson, or AJ Green, or should we draft one of the top wide receivers? In my opinion, we should just trade up and get to Judy or Lamb. Or we stay at 22 and take T. Higgins or uh, Henry Ruggs if they're there. This year, there should be no excuses for a lack of production in the offense, especially the passing game. This needs to be the year that we decide if J.A. is our guy or not. The team is too talented to not be a contender based on bad QB play or play calling. We have an opportunity to be great. All right, so should we sign out of those three, Amari Cooper, Robbie Anderson, A.J. Green? Which one makes your team the best it can be? For getting salary cap, for getting all of that. Oh, stop it. Well, you have no enough brainer. money. It's Cooper. You, have, you think Cooper? It's Cooper. He I can see. run more of the routes that you have in this offense already. A Cooper's season in Oakland where he just disappeared scares the hell out of me. That season scares the hell out of me. Because he Randy showed Moss it. disappeared there. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying. That's true. It's easy. It's easy to have one season where that's true. you're, you're a yeah. ghost. I mean, that's fine. I like the pedigree of Cooper. I like his age. I, I see you. It's almost like, like I'll wait. I'm trying to think about. It. I'm trying to think of a nice uh, comparison that oh, I can do. Okay, great. All right. Um, Looking forward to this. Awesome. Go ahead. Jessica Beals in your house right now. Okay. 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 All right. And uh, talking to my 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 pregnant wife. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But she, she, wa- <laughs> she wants to hook up with you, though. Okay, and yeah. And Katie's standing right there. There yeah. you go. Well, technically, you're not married. You can't tell me to take the salary cap off of Cooper when that's going to be one of the deciding factors whether or not he comes to Buffalo. You can't do that. Listen, if Jessica, if Jessica Biel said that she wanted to hook up with me, they would never find her body because my wife, my wife would do what my wife would do. <laughs> If Jessica Peel said seven for 125 million. <laughs> Between the three, the fact of the matter is, I don't think uh, Robbie Anderson uh, fits from a culture standpoint. He's a speed guy. I, I he's so intrigued. He's so, I, I agree, but so. I just don't think it's a cult. I think it's a culture thing. Um, he's he's had some trouble off the field, so I, I just don't see that happening. Mark Cooper is going to cost you a fortune, but he gives he gives a fresher life into. Um, into that wide receiver room because right now you have you have Brown and you have Beasley who both are going to be on expiring deals not this season but next season so like you got to breathe some life into that room at some point uh, you know Amari Cooper definitely extends the life the lifespan of your wide receiver room but um, he also stops you from taking a wide receiver in the first two rounds yep I'm on the other side of that because I think the contract it would take to sign Amari Cooper. Although all your points are very valid. Mm-hmm. The contract it would take to sign Amari Cooper would bleed into guys you need to sign in I the agree. next few years. And a rookie wide receiver Duh. doesn't do that. Right. Yep. And, they, totally and because agree. you still have two more years of Beasley and Brown, the rookie can learn. Totally agree. Uh, West Palm Tom. Dawson Knox uh, catches uh, his first NFL touchdown and said it's his first TD since high school. I wonder how many drops he had in college. Furthermore, how in the world was he even drafted? His blocking prowess wasn't there in the Houston game. Now, I I agree that Dawson Knox had a ways to go because the offense that they ran in college did not predicate him having to be an outstanding run blocker. Right? Yeah, when you think of Ole Miss, you don't think power running. No, exactly. Uh, But also, you you have to look at there were two wide receivers who were top draft picks at the position Mm -hmm. in drafted in the same year. Marquise Brown. Mm-hmm. And DK Metcalf. Yeah, was it Marquise Brown or was it no AJ Brown was Oklahoma? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it was AJ Marquise. Brown. It was Marquise Brown. Yeah, I, yeah. But here's what I, here's what I like about the Knox pick itself. 
He was not the first option in that offense. No, he was not. He wasn't. He was like Nor was he maybe, the second. Maybe the fourth. Probably third the, or fourth. Probably fourth. So his transition to the NFL would have been smoother than any type feature. Like a TJ Hawkinson coming into right. this offense right. would be frustrated. Yeah. Um, I know a Fant would have been right. frustrated coming into this right. offense. Knox, given the opportunity, being a third a third round. Yeah, Maybe third or fourth round. Four, yeah, yeah, he was. He was. Uh, they traded because they got Singletary in the third, so Knox yeah, would have been. And then there. Yeah, but the point is, that's fine. he's used to not being the feature of an offense, and with you already signed Croft at that point, you're going to be able to learn. Right. I mean, that's yeah. There was this, there was less pressure put on him than the other tight ends that were named in that draft. Although his skill set is arguably equal. From you know, like don't get me wrong. I think Noah Fant is a freak, right? I think T.J. Hawkinson is is a, a, a oh, outstanding yeah, yeah. tight end. But imagine him here not getting the ball. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I I don't think it would have mattered uh, how Dawson Knox performed. The tight end position wasn't going to get the opportunity. Um, you know, yeah. why spend the top pick in it? Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Why spend the top pick in it? Uh, Scott Blakely. Everyone has written off Gore. Why? Dable turned uh, turned him into a predictable one dimensional running back. However, I still think. He wants to play. What are your feelings on Gore? I like him for another year and to let TJ Yeldon go, bring in an additional third to fifth round running back like Gore mentor both. Okay, so stance there. Gore stays, Yeldon gone. I know you're a big Yeldon guy, so I'll give big you a minute. Yeldon. I'll give you a minute. Go ahead. What do I have to do? Defend your boy. Well, I want to hear your point first. Why are you letting him go? Why are we yell- letting Yeldon go? Yeah. I'm just uh, Yeldon's for the sake currently of the on your contract. Yeah, he is. Gore is He's not. got another year, right? No, this is this is for sake of the example. Okay. Um, <clears throat> no, no, I just think you can because of the first comment that you mentioned in there. He's one dimension. Dable made him one dimensional. Right. Not to say that Gore can't catch the ball. Right. He's just not a feature. That's not a threat when you think of Frank right. Gore. You think of, you know, he's going to put it, as Paul says, he's going to put his helmet on and take souls. Um, that's what he does. That's what he does. But TJ Yellen offers you, in those five wide sets, I think he offers you a new dimension to the offense that we still have not seen Dable do. Right. You want to go with a 21 personnel, two backs, one right. tight end. You bring Yeldon in, and then you flare Yeldon out. Right. So you still have the, the ability to run a screen to Devin Singletary. Mm-hmm. You motion them out. They're in their base package. Right. You got a linebacker now on Yeldon. Why, why not take advantage of that? He's proven right. in the past. I mean, 2018, didn't he have more receptions than Zay Jones? I mean, I know it's not a high bar, but he's a running back for crying out loud. <laughs> um, but yeah. that's, that's, why I, that's why I like the, the element – of expanding your offense is why I like Yeldon. I don't. Right. I don't. I'm not partial to him in any other reason. Right. I think Yeldon could do uh, some of the things in a pinch that some of your other players on offense could do at different positions. I think Yeldon could be utilized in that jet game if they want to keep that concept and McKenzie, Ray, Ray McLeod, Andre Fall, or Andre Roberts are unavailable. I think. I think Yeldon could give that to you. Yeah. Uh, he He's can so be. Big. He could be a threat in five wide sets. I think he gives that to you. He gives you, you know, a threat underneath. And he's 6'2", for crying He's 6'2". Out loud. No one it's knows. Dude. It's weird. Yeah. Is he an ideal running back in today's NFL? N- no, because, uh, again, running backs are, are transitioning more to either your scat back and, and your receiving threat like McCaffrey or your Zeke and you just are going to pound it through the tackles. There's no middle ground. He's a tweener. He's he's a tweener at running back. He's not really a he's not really a between the tackles guy. He's a threat on the outside. But I'm just saying from a running back perspective, he's not a threat on the inside. I'm just saying he's kind of a tweener. He's, he's not big enough to be an interior threat. He's a little too big to be a running back and a little too tall to be a running back. While I agree that McCaffrey's more of a receiving threat than an inside the tackle threat, I think Zeke's the most complete back in the NFL. Well, that was just time. making a comparison. No, I mean, yeah, I was, I was saying, you're comparing a guy that is more of a receiver than a runner to a guy who can do everything. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to talk about a guy that just pounds the ball in between the tackles, you're not going to talk about David Johnson, right? No, I'm just kidding. Well, that's going to be the episode we cut after this. I promise you that. <laughs> we have a guest appearance. We do. Mini ski is in the back. Mini ski, ski bag, eighteen. <laughs> ski bag, eighteen in the back. <laughs> Follow him on uh, on YouTube. <laughs> he has some wonderful insight. Chuck Christopher, I want Levy our Calavion Chasen. He's a perfect fit for our, our defensive needs. Versatility is off the charts. Let's make it happen. Who do you guys like in round one? So draft coverage takes up the entire next series of two months. So I just want to point out that as far as getting into details over which guys we love, there's going to be 
plenty of content coming oh, yeah. out about who we love. Oh, yeah. we, with we, with we, that being said, yes. I think it will be hard for McDermott to stop himself from getting the type of player in this draft that will be available at 22 if the run on QBs and wide receivers is as expected. Because you figure nine of the first 21 picks are going to be a wide receiver or quarterback. Nine? Well, you figure there's probably going to be two to three quarterbacks. Or you just say no in German. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be probably two to three quarterbacks taken in the top 21, right? Probably yeah. four to five receivers. <clears throat> so, I mean, you start doing it, there could be nine players of need like that. You're not drafting a center, so you're not worried about that. Okay. When do you think it grows? One. Burrow goes one. No, but oh, no. Burrow goes one. That's on uh, the Bengals Unbalanced, uh, Bengals which you can find over on hashtag Road Trip. So, oh, um, I can't wait. Redskins Unbalanced is going to be pretty hysterical. Well, they already are. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. So, as far as uh, do I do I think the Bills are going to end up going offense or defense? I don't think they're going wide receiver. Just the talent at the other positions, I think, is too great. You may see them go defensive end because they're because they're the Bills. <laughs> They could go defensive. Well, you got here. Murphy going into the last year of his deal. Right. It's like, Hughes is guaranteed. Here's, here's Hughes why. is guaranteed on this team next season. His contract's guaranteed. Yeah, Hughes so. and Murphy you have on this on this team. After that, as we've talked about many times, it's it's the Bills and being McDermott so far have been ahead of the curve before positional need becomes a need. Right. They take care of it. They either sure double do. down with a free agent contract of a prove it deal, mm-hmm. and then they draft their player. The thing that we have to, that why why we can't really answer that question right now is because free agency has not hit yet. If they re-sign Phillips, if they re-sign Lawson, then they're not going to go right with that right. Um, because Lawson is going to be looking for a long deal, long-term deal, big deal. So is Phillips. So unless some of these signings, if you ask me on March 25th that same question, it, I'd be able to give you different. more. Yeah, yeah, because then a week of uh, a week of free agency would have went by. Already. Right, so, I think that's I think it's a, a fair point to bring is that we're kind of working on the assumption that Phillips and Lawson are gone. Are gone. Yeah, right. That's so a fair if that's the case, then that that makes an yeah, excellent makes pick. Uh, Snarl, how much should Andre Roberts sell number eighteen to AJ Green for? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's that's, that's a, a conversation where where AJ Green just walks up and goes, "How you doing, little man?" <laughs> <laughs> just takes the jersey. <laughs> hey, Andre, thanks, man. <laughs> that's right. What are you yeah. doing? Just just, just, yeah, just, yeah, just don't worry about it. <laughs> Who was it that the Bills the Bills signed uh, and it he ended up having the same last name? It was Williams, wasn't it? Where there was a player, there was a player for the Bills that had the same last name and number, and then the Bills brought in another player, and he just took the same last name and number. Who was it? It was just it was Gaines. recent. Oh yeah, that's right. It was Phil. Yeah, yeah, that's Phil right. Gaines, it was Gaines. Gaines. Yeah, that's right. They didn't even change the, the the didn't even have to change the name on the back of the jersey. Um, so I got kind of the crux of the question: one, should the Bills get rid of those alternate red jerseys, uh, and two, what are the Bills going to do about AJ Green? Um, I mean, we kind of highlighted AJ Green a little bit in, in an episode last week. There was a whole lot of yelled about at. him. Yeah, we got yelled at pretty good. Um, but I don't know. I like the red jerseys. I don't, I don't know. It's not horrible. It's not the red and black from the Sabres. Thank God. That's true. That's true. Um, I'm I'm a big proponent of. I just wish one of these teams would go to those Blaze helmets. The Blaze. The Blaze helmets. We saw them at the autograph signing. Those were the really cool metallic ones. Yeah, oh God! You yeah. can't you can't see anything off of those. What do you mean? If if it was a sunny day. Well, yeah, you just throw it to the shiny thing. <laughs> Listen, the quarterback bitching about the, the glare on the helmets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> you don't need to show off. No, <laughs> it's not showing off. <laughs> can, can I just complain about the, the, the gloves? During the Super Bowl, players were wearing yellow gloves. I thought flags were flying all yeah. over the place during the Super Bowl. There's yellow gloves. But I get the old man moment. <laughs> I guess, all these gloves are all over the place. We, are, we, I, we have our moments where we go a little, you know, Muppets in the balcony. Get off my porch. We go a little Muppets in the balcony. Oh. Um, <laughs> Brendan, Zilis, Brendan Zielinski, TPT. Uh, what is the biggest need for the Bills? Wide receiver, edge, tight end. And would you use draft or free agency to fill that need? Um, I would... Biggest need for me is corner. That's my biggest need. No, just corner. the first three. Of the, no, 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 et, et cetera. Yeah, oh, okay, so okay, et cetera. Okay. Biggest need is corner. No. That's my biggest need. No. You do nothing. What, you disagree? Okay, you agree with me. Okay, yeah. what, what's your point? Um, 
I thought it was just those three. I didn't hear the etc. Yeah, etc. So except I think uh, uh, corner yeah. is going to be filled with free agency. Okay. I think wide receiver would be filled with free agency. Okay. I think edge and tight end. Um, I don't think right. I don't think they're going to get a tight end because okay. you drafted two last year. I agree. Yep. Uh, but I think you draft an edge guy because those those that's the hot position that it's like oh you know yeah. it's like let's let's say put it this way when I was younger I asked my brother he he had we had a decision I could buy a car or I could buy land mm-hmm. he goes dude buy land they they st- <laughs> he goes buy land because they stopped making that a long time ago they make cars every year. <laughs> They make edge rushers every year. Yeah. You can draft and turn and burn those guys so fast. Right. Some of the positions that are more a seasoned player that you need, that's where you get the free agent, the veteran free agency. And Bean and McDermott have shown a propensity to get cornerbacks, linebackers, you know, uh, cornerbacks, um, uh, the type of mold of tight end, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what they want to do. Well, and I agree. There, there is a history of being going after cornerbacks in free agency to fill that need. The problem is we're a couple of years deep and we've gone through six of them. So I have a feeling like that they're, they're kind of burned out their tread on that tire. It's time to yeah. just, you know, because you don't know where the Trey White thing is going to go. I mean, you're assuming you're going to keep Trey. You yeah. don't know where it goes. So now it's the perfect time that you got the 22nd pick. You drafted Trey at 21. Seven. What? 27. 27? Yeah. He was drafted at 27? Yep. I was drafted at 21. Okay. Okay, we well drafted Trey at 27. <laughs> you understand that that the replacement level players are there at that level. Yes. So, yes. Uh, to me, the biggest well, he was the fourth corner. one. He was the fourth corner off the board. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's weird. But, yeah. I mean, I, okay, I could get behind the fact that corner is a need. It's not the biggest need to me. Mm. Me, the biggest need is a tackle. I still think you need a tackle. We have been drafting some of those. Dane Martin, which Big Ten running back should uh, the Bills choose? Who's in the Big Ten? (laughs) So who who is that? (laughs) What are those? If I had my choice, I would trade for Elliott or Barkley. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, again, draft coverage, lots coming up. I'm probably not focusing too much on the running back position. I don't see them doubling down in in running back. Um, I, I probably again of that. Think that's just kind of what they do, so I don't really see us doing a running back. Um, the most likely player the Bills will trade away by John Patrick. That's an interesting one. Trade away? Yep. Who is? Yeah. Who would the Bills I, trade? I, I don't know of any player that they have currently on their roster that they want to get rid of. I. They've turned the roster over so much that's in their yeah. image now. Yeah, I agree. But at some point, you also have to look at value, right, and what you're going to get for a certain player. So I think a player, uh, and don't crucify me for this, but a player like Jerry Hughes becomes very dealable. Did you not just hear what I just said about edge rushers? That's what I'm saying is you could trade Jerry and use. How could you? They make them every year. Yeah, you're going to replace them. That's the deal. My point is, if they're, if they're made every year, how are you going to trade it to a team if they're made every year? The reason that I say Jerry is coming from a couple different places. One is contract guarantees him to be on the team whether he's traded or not, so there's, it really doesn't matter. Two is the fact that he's the last of the Bills pre-McDermott. So, is he the last? Well, he's one of, if not Ferguson. the. Yeah, Reed. Snap flow 69. One of the best Twitter handles on Anytime the face Anytime we can of the mention earth. his handle, I'm going to. One of the best Twitter handles on the face of this earth. <laughs> But he's one of the last guys from that from that era of the Bills. So, again, if the Bills re-signed him to show him that they were committed to him, so I don't think he gets traded. But I don't really see many other options out there. Because I doubt you're trading Levi Wallace. I doubt you could trade Robert Foster. If you trade Robert Foster, you're getting a seventh-round pick for him. Well, there, there's those guys I think I would go to first. Like the restricted free agents and the exclusive right free agent guys mm-hmm. are the guys I would go to first. Yeah, because you can you're, they have they have contract value to another team. Yeah, I agree. <coughs> trade Kroom. Okay. That's not a bad one. That's not a bad one. But trade and, and then I'll pause right now because this is the point in the video that everyone's going to comment about Pagula. <laughs> yeah, that, well, he's, he's only on the team because he's Dave Pagula's daughter. I never trade him. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, uh... Trade the Tulele. Listen, there's fat guys everywhere. <laughs> You don't need to trade for one. I just wanted to say this here, actually. <laughs> there's fat guys everywhere. Trade Star. You just bought there's, his jersey. <laughs> well, that's probably why he would get traded. Good point. 